Hi folks, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to configure your zero tier in a hub and spoke model, as someone requested. So essentially, the network is set up like here on the screen. And by default, my zero tier here client, which is here at home, can connect to my zero tier client on this remote network. And that's generally, you know, back and forth. I could SSH into this host if it had SSH, or I can remote desktop into it, or web server, whatever. But let's say you're remote, and what you want to do is connect back to your home network on your device, your zero tier device here, and be able to directly access other networks you have set up. Because by default, the clients here cannot connect to this particular address you see on the screen or any address in this dot six or dot four network so we're going to configure this zero tier client to be a gateway or a router or firewall if you will to access these other networks and what i'm going to do is here's one of my clients on this network i'm going to set up a continuous ping to a host and when the network comes up or when the firewall is configured, we should start seeing pings occurring on the network. All right. Uh, notice actually 168.71. Let's do that one. So by default, Windows is going to do four pings and then terminate. I did a dash T to allow continuous pings. So I'm going to configure this gateway which is a Linux box, a oh, correction. This zero tier as a gateway is a Linux box to connect to these networks here. And currently you see that does not work. So I'm gonna hop over to my, um, that I'm using my program, the uh, bash class ET. I wanna go back to the main menu and I'm going to manage routes, number six right here, manage routes. It's like a network you want to manage routes for, number one. And then I'm going to list my routes. You see my default route is the only one that's there. So I'm going to add a new one. And the first thing you want to enter is a network that you want to connect to. 6.0 slash 24. So that's the remote network I want to connect to. And then the host that you want to be the gateway. And in this case, the remote gateway is going to be my Linux server here. So this is the remote system. Let me go back to my, my diagram. Uh, yes, this tab, this tab, this tab, here we go. So this is the remote network here. And this is, this is the Linux server I'm on currently to configure the firewall. So this host right here is this host in this diagram right here. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Here's my network in my interface. And then here's my IP address. So this is the IP address and configuration that I want for my gateway. So this host is going to be the gateway to access this network. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter and then a message route was added and list my routes and good. And you can see that the route is now added. Let's look at our Linux box and you can see it is now allowing me access to my remote network. As you can see here, it was not before, but now it's allowing access. I'm going to kill this. Let's try, let's try 4.4 on the other network. It's not working there. I want to go back here. I want to add a route. 192.168.4.0/24, and then the same host is going to allow access to the 4.0 network. Route was added. My route there. You see, I now have access. So now. If any client connects 
then they can get access to this dot six and dot four network. So you probably want to Im implement flow rules to restrict the IPs and services, or I should say ports and protocols that are allowed to access that dot six and dot four network if you have to. And you can set up multiple networks and only allow um, specific people access to specific services using your flow rules, okay? So what did I do to configure my remote system over here? <clears throat> well, I in, entered these commands here. So uh, this is actually, actually out of order. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> this goes up here. I enabled this Echo one. I did it so that I can just immediately do the test. What you want to do, however, is you want to edit your sysctl.conf file. And for the porting, you want to uncomment this here. That way it survives a reboot. Because if you just do the echo statement like I did, it's not going to survive that reboot. Okay. You're going to go back to not being a router. So that enables routing to occur on a Linux system. Save that, and then you run sysctl-p to write that change. And that takes place right away, All right? And then you want to enable your appy tables masquerading. This is what's going to have all clients have the IP address of the public interface for this Linux server. In this case, my public interface is right here. In six NP six, and then that's the IP address. So when it goes to another host on a remote network, oh, that's a uh, I should have tried a different one, but it still was going to work anyway. Uh, let me try dot seven two. You can see how that still works. I was pinging the interface of my um, gateway, the public interface, which means it was still routing. So. Let me see if I can position these so it's easier, easier to see here. That should work for now right there. So right here is, is my network interface. That's what you're going to put whatever's right there. Whatever your interface is on that remote LAN, not the zero tier, but your interface for that remote LAN, that's the um, interface you want to put here. It's probably ETH0. It may be ETH1, ETH2, whatever your net, how your network is set up. So we'll just change that accordingly. And then the next two lines is going to allow forwarding between the zero tier interface and your public interface. And this is the public interface uh, correction. <laughs> this is the uh, zero tier interface on, on my, my system. As we see right here, number six, right there, number six. See how it matches that right there? Now, you could put ZT plus right here, especially if you have a gateway that's providing access to um, other networks and things, but that's up to you if you want to do that. Um, I only have one. That's all I need it for. And then the forwarding rule down here at the bottom. And you want to ensure that when you enable this, you want to have your... Um, these in a startup script so that when you restart the system, these IP tables commands will be inserted so that when I reboot this server here, I won't uh, for updates or whatever, then my clients can connect and start routing again. Okay. So that's how you configure your remote Linux server to be a gateway. So you want to first enable IP forwarding, and I did this just to demonstrate um, how you can do it from the command line. And you can see how the pinging is occurring because it's, it's acting as a router right now. <clears throat> if I change that one to a zero, I'm effectively going to disable routing. You can see how that stopped right there. And now I'm going to re-enable routing. It took a moment for it to catch back up. I may have to kill it. There we go. Yeah, there we go. 
but now it's pinging again. So now it's back routing. Okay. So this is just a way to do it real quick from the command line to enable routing. It has to be set to one. Zero disables routing. All right. So that's the hub and spoke model. That's how, and it's, if you want to look at this from a context of a VPN, this is split tunneling because all of my internet traffic is going through my standard or commodity internet. But when I want to go to one of these networks, dot four or dot six, it's going through the zero tier interface. So if I go to Google, for example, my Google traffic is going out my, oops, it's going out my standard interface and out to Google. But if I want to go to dot four or dot six network over here, it's going to take the route of the VPN and then go to whichever host. All right.